Hello, I'm Monica Garcia, President of the LAUSD Board of Education. Welcome to Families Matter. Joining me today are my co-hosts, Maria Casillas, the Chief of School and Family and Parent Community Services, and Board Member Nuri Martinez. Our goal is to provide information so families can help their children graduate and stay safe in school. Today's topic is all about school safety. Joining us shortly will be our expert panelists, but first, a chance for us to talk about the latest news regarding the LAUSD and our families. Ladies, what is new and exciting? Well, I think the most exciting is the number of schools that have joined that group of schools that have achieved 800 and 900 on their API. Uh, and that is a really good story for LA Unified because you know the more schools get up there on their standardized test results, mm -hmm. the harder it is to boost their achievement. And uh, these kids uh, in these schools have done, I think, an excellent job and the credit goes to their teachers and their fine principals who are leading this so effort. So we have 120 new schools and a total of 250 schools in the district. In that high, high in category. That high, high category. And as a parent, you know, the first thing people ask, those parents who understand the district, is you want to find out what the API score is of that school. Oh, yes. And if you see, and I tell my parents, if you see a school anywhere in the 800s, especially in the 900s, that means something very special right. is taking place at and that And actually, school. that is that is the very first indicator for families, and even would-be families. That it's like a grade, right? Yeah, like they're to looking a for a mm -hmm. very good, safe place for them to raise a family, and the first thing they check out is, what is the API score? And I wish that more parents would do that, that, um, that they could drive this market just based on what's good for kids, and what's good for kids is really what's good in terms of their education. So we're very proud of all of these schools, and I think that um, that's a real boost, you know, to um, the credit of our superintendent and the leadership, to the leadership of you guys on the board. So that's always good to know. It's very good. We have, like Nuri said, 250 schools that have reached the California goal of being yes. 800. When you're at 800, you're considered a successful school. So that is lifting our schools in all neighborhoods, because this was when we celebrated at the board, it was in every board district. There were yes. schools that had achieved this level, and we know scores aren't everything, but they are absolutely an important right. indicator for any school in California. Good, good, good. It's very good. And along with that, you just approved um, resources that will provide kids with a digital uh, device. device. So tell us a little more about that. So at the last board meeting, we, we voted on the initial three-year plan to give every student in our district a, you know, an electronic device in school. Mm -hmm. And this not only helps um, bridge the digital divide in some of our communities, I think you and I see that and, and, and recognize that there's a tremendous digital divide that we have to struggle with, but it also enables our kids to have the resources in school for teachers to begin to teach in this new era of technology. Mm -hmm. And it also uh, addresses, as we roll out the Common Core standards, which also speak to technology and these devices that our kids are gonna have to need, need to know how to use, and our teachers are gonna need to know how to use to teach. Yes. So it's all a good thing. I think it's a very exciting time. It's right. very good. It's, it's closing the resource gap, closing the digital divide, and I think it's going to be another game changer for teaching and learning. And so many um, private schools are doing this already, yes. right? A lot of our, our friends in the charter world are also teaching in this new way. And our kids in our neighborhoods should also have the resources to be able to compete at that level. So right. I think it sends a really good message about what we're willing to put resources into. I think it's, it's very wonderful. Good. Yes, it is. And it's like the board of 1995 that started talking about we have to build schools, we mm -hmm. have to build schools. Our challenge is we need to build the classrooms of the 21st century. And so technology is a part of it. I'm glad LA Unified is leading. I think our families and parents should know there's more good news on yes. its way. We'll be right back to discuss school safety in the LAUSD with our panel of experts when we return. on that stage give with such heart and um, earnestness 
their 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 souls to this performance and amplify the voices of human rights defenders people who have faced imprisonment and torture and death for basic rights which most of us take for granted it was a very very moving wonderful uplifting evening that's what tonight is about about these wonderful young people telling us again and again how we have to reach out and help those who are hurting so much we cannot stay passive we must speak we must call out we must reach out a lot of people have been suffering around the world all different races and so it, it motivates me to actually step up speak my mind and not be afraid of what people think and then also it encourages me to actually try to make a change in what people think try to make a change in society my community let people know what's going on around us. Occasions like this where we see wonderful actors, but a, a, together with students who also um, have a voice, a powerful voice of their own, is really what Senator Kennedy, I think, would have wanted. Watching these young people play together, and they had a, an innate sense and, a, and an instinct that was absolutely perfect. And we just felt like we were being swept along in this tidal wave of, of energy and talent and commitment and so it was a great night and I'm very proud to be a part of it. Welcome back to Families Matter. Joining us now to discuss the importance of school safety are Pia Escudero, the Director of LAUSD School Mental Health, and Rowena Lagrosa, Administrator of Operations. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Ms. Lagrosa, tell us, what do parents need to know about LA Unified's commitment to school safety? We would love our parents to realize that safety is a number one priority in the LAUSD and for each and every one of our schools. And that comes about through a number of ways. First of all, we're very fortunate that every elementary school, span school and middle school will be um, staffed with a two hour, two, a three hour campus aid, two three hour campus aids um, mm -hmm. effective within a month or so. Additionally, every school has a safe school plan and that's developed from by a number of stakeholders at the school and that safe school plan is really a living document it's accessible and available for parents and parents actually participate on the safety committee that help to develop the safe school plan mm -hmm. so it outlines what would be done at a school site in the event of any type of an emergency from an earthquake to flooding to a bomb threat um, any type of an, of an emergency would be addressed. The school knows what to do. It's preventative in nature very often because we, we brainstorm what we would do in the event of an emergency. We mitigate circumstances that may lead to some type of an emergency. Mm -hmm. We plan, uh, but then it's also composed of how would we would respond and recuperate should there be an, an emergency at a school site. So is the safe school plan um, individual to each school come up with its own plan or is this a district-wide plan that everyone needs to follow? There, it's a template mm -hmm. and everyone does need to follow and it, everyone's school, safe school plan has specific components to that are the school. same across the, mm -hmm. every school. However, it's individualized because it's inherent to that school community right. to develop a plan mm -hmm. that is best meeting their needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we always think about school safety as physical safety, but we know that we have a lot of mental health issues. And Pia, you, you and your team have just done a great job Thank leading you. our district in being able to respond to our students. What do you think parents need to understand about mental health? Well. Thank you so much. I, it's such an opportunity to talk about the preparation, the prevention of work that we do. As Rowena mentioned, we have volumes of information in our safe school plan, and a huge part of that is the mental health component. It's the human element. How will parents uh, be trained to get their children and how to demonstrate calmness and how to recover in the event of a, a situation? But I think the uh, whole element of as you prepare the buildings, as teachers get prepared and know what to do. Our parents need to know also how we act in the event of a situation that may impact children. It's all interrelated and it's all very important because our students can in fact respond well and 
actually they do amazing in our um, drills and in our practices. Right. And it's important to know that we can model uh, calm, we're ready, way before. Sound and so behavior. Sound behavior, and mm -hmm. then if we, in the event of something to were right. to happen, our, our students know how to react. And I, and I think it's really important that parents actually know that this is taking place and that in some way we can communicate to them that we expect them also to be calm. Right. Uh, and I think we can help them be calm if they know that we're prepared. Mm. Many, many years ago, I was a school principal, and I, it was the, in the early days, as you can tell from my gray hair, of, the, of having these school safety plans, and we had an earthquake drill, and I thought I'd done a fabulous job informing our parents about everything and had them participate in it. And I remember having one parent who really thought we were having an earthquake, and mm. she participated in the training, and somehow she really, it looked so real to her. We had the nurse carry out, you know, people. We had triage. We had everything. And it was so real that I realized at that time, I was, I was a very new principal at the time, that I had to do a better job as the principal to make sure that our parents responded in a very calm and realistic way. Mm -hmm. So I went mm -hmm. out of my way. So for all our parents hearing us today, be sure that you contact the schools and that you know what the safety plan is so that you can be prepared yes. as well and support your children. Mm -hmm. So the campus aides, explain that a little bit more because I, I, I want to make it very clear to our audience what the role of the campus aides is going to be at our elementary schools. Um, I understand that not all, none of our elementary schools actually have a police officer that is on, on campus. Mm -hmm. And so to a lot of our parents, given the, these latest events, um, uh, with these, you know, massacres, you know, and, and strangers walking onto a campus, are this are these folks supposed to work with the principal? Or is it just another pair of eyes to keep a lookout? That's a great uh, during, question. During when kids are being dropped off and then when they're being picked up at school? Exactly. They will be that extra pair of ears and eyes mm -hmm. in order to be visible on the campus, be there to greet parents, um, and specifically to be able to ensure that anyone entering a campus is there on school business mm -hmm. and is mm -hmm. signing in. Um, but they'll also be providing additional supervision on the yard when students are in the yard before school, during break and nutrition, um, after school as well. And those hours will be identified by the school site as to when it would be most conducive to have that extra supervision on board. And they, can have, they can have up to, they can split the position and have up to two There'll be two, two, positions two positions of three hours each, mm -hmm. so they're receiving an additional six hours of supervision on each and every campus. Mm -hmm. And we're doing this for all of our elementary schools? Yes, every elementary school, some of our SPAN K-8 schools, our middle schools as well, and we know that we have a school police officer assigned to our high right. school campuses. Right. So uh, what do you recommend to parents? How do ha what do you recommend in terms of having a conversation with their children about safety. What should we say out loud? We don't want to be afraid to come to school, but what, what can we say? Right. I think that we need communication is key. It's key so that parents feel confident that at the school site priority is, mm -hmm. safety is a priority for us. But it's also important that parents have frank conversations with their students that if something should happen that makes you feel uncomfortable or you are concerned, who on that campus is an adult that you can go to? Who can you go to? And so relationships on a campus are extremely important mm -hmm. so that there's a level of trust that's built amongst the staff and the students and, and the staff and parents as well. So communication is key and having that conversation before an event occurs so that we can feel confident that there are trusting adults on campus that our students yeah, can go to. I think we to. need to talk more about how we're in it together because so many times when we drop off our kids at school we just expect for or we sort of we walk away thinking it's the school, everything's going to be taken care of, nothing's going to happen to our kids while they're at school. Unfortunately, we live in really scary times and things do happen. And even in the nicest communities of communities, things happened. They happened everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I think we also need to have a conversation of what the community school aspect of all this is, what the role of the community is when responding to an emergency, and how we can uh, better prepare our parents to also help and pitch pitch in and how, how we prepare our kids and if there is an emergency, what what is the family plan, mm, right? How right. are they going to get back to, if, if I'm, for example, in downtown, how do I communicate with my daughter uh, if no one is there to pick her up? Who should she go home with? I mean, that kind of conversation at All home the details, is very yeah. important because we get stuck. I mean, we, unfortunately, we don't live. Um, or work, I should say, 10 minutes from my daughter's school. I mean, I wish I could, but that's mm -hmm. not the reality. 
So I think we need to broaden the way we, we, we have these conversations at home and, and bring in the entire school community, the surrounding community, and our, have a different conversation with our parents. Mm -hmm. What is a family plan mm -hmm. in case of an emergency? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you hear that? That's a very that? good idea yeah. that yeah, we that should. Is. What should we do? You, we I think about have, it every day. You know, workshops for parents and about yes. helping them develop their home plan. That's right. a wonderful idea. Yes, I, but really I do want to caution you that when we do that as parents and at school and we have questions, it is a uh, an, a time where you're getting information. So let's not put fear in our children. Right. You know, if something happens, we're going to come out. So it's a common, and you said it, Rowena, it's a good communication opportunity to talk about, are you scared about something? Do you have someone to speak to at school? And a as a parent, as a teacher, all of us adults that are helping to create a safer community in schools, mm -hmm. it's asking questions and then finding out, how can I help? Because mm -hmm. there are opportunities to right. help. The safe school plans that Rowena mentioned right. um, include parent participation. If, if they come in mm -hmm. to volunteer, there's things that they can do. So I think that it takes all the community to, to create that common um, thread of, of keeping our children safe. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a short break. And when we return, we'll be joined by Chief, the Chief of Police of the Los Angeles School Police Department, Steve Zipperman. The Adventures of Disaster Girl, an LAUSD employee. Disaster Girl prepares for a lockdown. Disaster Girl knows search and rescue. Disaster Girl follows triage procedures. Disaster Girl doesn't work at your school, but you do. LAUSD, we're all disaster service workers. Today we had an emergency drill at school. I learned that school is a safe place for me to be in an emergency. We practice what we should do. My teacher practiced too. If something happens while we're at school, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Emergencies at school are a frightening thought for parents and guardians. The Los Angeles Unified School District has online information for parents explaining how the district is prepared for and responds to emergencies. Located at parentemergencyinformation.lausd.net, topics include earthquake, tsunami, fire, lockdown, shelter in place, and public health. It also includes information for parents to do during and after a school emergency. Information for general preparedness for you and your family is also available. This information is currently available in English, Spanish, Korean, Chinese, and Armenian. The LAUSD is dedicated to the health and welfare of our students. Welcome back. Joining us now to continue our discussion on school safety is Chief of the LA School Police Department, Steve Zipperman. Welcome, Chief. And before we go on to school safety, I just want to tell everybody, you're one of our LAUSD grads. Yes, and I am. Proud of, so I'm proud. very proud of it. <laughs> we're proud of very you, proud and, and, thank you and thank you for the great work that you've done here at the LAUSD. So I want to know where you went to school. Taft High School. Taft. Oh, He's right. A he is a Taft <laughs> grad. Very good. Chief, we know every day parents are concerned with the safety of their child. Yes. This is what you are dedicated to leading here at the district. Help us. What, what, do, what is your role in this whole conversation around school safety? Well, I think, uh, I think it's important to understand and make sure the parents really have a, a, a sense of, of what we do. Um, I couldn't help, you know, the, the last uh, speaker, when Rowena was talking about how we're now going to introduce campus aides on our elementary schools. I think that it's important for the parents to understand that um, it's not that the elementary schools have been unchecked because mm -hmm. our police department really deploys over 200 officers a day throughout the district. As you know, our high schools have our campus officers. Uh, mm -hmm. One third of middle schools have police officers. Mm -hmm. Another one third of those middle schools have school safety officers. 
And we also have what we call our campus support safe passage units. We used to call them patrol units, but they're out in the cars. And they also respond to other schools that uh, do not have the uh, resident officers, elementary mm -hmm. schools as well. But I think it's important to understand that uh, this district, our police department, mm -hmm. the parents' police department, it is their police department for mm -hmm. the school district, uh, they need to be reassured that their kids are safe. I, I'm very proud of what our men and women in our police department have done. Mm -hmm. Uh, just like uh, all other entities, although we're very short in resources, it still has not uh, minimized what we're able to accomplish out there. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's important to understand that the engagement that's involved with our officers, with our school safety officers, um, with the administrators, with the students, the staff, and even the parents, um, it is a collaboration. And we continue to, to reach out to ensure that our officers pay attention not only what's happening on the campuses but outside the campuses and to ensure we have a sense of awareness so that uh, we're able to do our job the way uh, the way it is expected that the parents will want to you know see their kids mm -hmm. interact with with all of our officers right and I think the other the other uh, reality is that you also have to partner with other law enforcement agencies yes so we, you do fall into other jurisdictions, and so what is that like? A lot of the times it's just based on relationships, and I know you're very well respected in the law enforcement field, and you have a lot of relationships, um, but what, is ha what has that been like in trying to address our school safety issue? Well, I think it's important to understand that uh, within our 710 square miles, we encompass all the city of Los Angeles right. and 15 other agencies, municipal agencies, that have police departments. The like smaller cities. Smaller cities, uh, San Fernando, Bell, Southgate, uh, uh, Vernon, many other small agencies. The other agencies have always been involved with the relationship with school police and the district in general. But I think it's important to understand that uh, although we take a look at what's happened uh, in recent events nationwide, it was no more than an hour and a half after the unfortunate incident in Sandy Hook, that phone calls were already being made back and forth to these other agencies, knowing that when these kids come back from winter break, okay. we're going to be there for you guys. Where do you need the extra resources mm -hmm. at? Um, this is a, a relationship that is it's priceless. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we realize that although we have a very robust police department, certainly, uh, you know, we can't be at every location. Right. Mm -hmm. So they certainly, uh, you know, st reached out and said, what do you need? What can we help you with? Uh, and so that partnership continues to grow. And um, I'm proud of it. And I think, uh, I think it, 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 the, you know, re reciprocal issue is there are many things that happen outside yeah. of the school grounds that they depend on us to give you know, some assistance with because the community are the schools, the schools are the community, and it's really, we do this hand in hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. And when we have a crisis, of course, this is when you step in. And how do you coordinate with, uh, when a crisis, say like Sandy Hook, mm -hmm. how do you get connected immediately? Because I'm sure that you have to have conversations. That's right. And we have a very large district, and so it's important that we also communicate. Right. Mm -hmm. I think what one of the things that we're the most proud sitting here on the table is that we have deep embedded protocols, um, practices, and relationships together. So a lot of what we do in terms of a crisis team, in, in terms of we have threat assessment models, we have suicide prevention programs, we have just an array of nationally le leading and recognized tools that we develop here, incorporate the mental health as much as law enforcement, as well as operations, and school sites so that we know together we're so much stronger. Mm -hmm. So in terms of what you mentioned um, and as we started the new year, it was really a collaboration and we actually have formal and informal relationships with LAPD where we mm -hmm. look at high risk areas, we work with situations, we also manage situations. Um, we're very fortunate we haven't had events um, as, um, as mentioned, but I think it's because we monitor we manage, we try to get people help. In terms of mm -hmm. mental health, there are so many things that we could do to prevent the evolution of violence and mm -hmm. criminal behavior. So we try to not just mitigate 
by law enforcement or maybe hospitalizing somebody, but when they return back to our schools and how we support them in the community is critical for us. So I you think know, that I just like to add, Pia, and, and that's just a critical component, the teamwork that's involved. Right. Um, we have probably uh, thwarted so many events that could have happened, yes. but they didn't because of all the players involved, the threat assessments, um, the mental health component, the law enforcement partnerships with that and how we all collaborate together. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's really amazing, and um, I, I, I'm I you know, coming from a municipal agency of 32 years into an organization like uh, LAUSD. I am simply amazed at what is together as far as the components yeah. and how well we work together as a team. And that's not said enough. I mean, I mean yes. the a, amount not. of stuff that goes on every day. It, I mean, we're huge. huge. We're almost 800 right. schools, right. and the stuff that goes on that. That we, immediately, you immediately, immediately gets prevented and addressed. Yes. Right. That right. just goes unnoticed by, it, it, by, by many of the Because it's natural public. for us, right. and it's our job, and we do it every day. I think the parents need to amazing. understand the systems that are in place at LAUSD for student safety, and our response as a team is probably, there's not, I don't, it's second to none. Right. right. I think it's a That's proactive great. way of ensuring that the way we react to a crisis is a sound uh, and very safe way for our families. I also want to mention the responsibility that all staff have to ensure the safety of students, obviously in times of crisis and be alert to everything. But we also are responsible for the, for the safety of students in other places, in the home. And mm -hmm. so this is why we reach out to our families That's and true. we try to provide guidance to our family because our families are very stressed out as mm -hmm. well. And so when you come to the component of crisis counseling and whatever, families are able to reach out to our department, to PS unit, to their school, and ask for help as well, especially when they feel that they're a little stressed out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, th I think it's important, you know, you had mentioned, you know, thanks for the great job, but I think P and I will both agree, it's, although uh, she and I have the responsibility of overseeing a lot of this stuff, it's the PSWs that are out there throughout the district, the men and women in the police department that make it happen. Yes. They're the ones that are connecting with everybody and making That's it happen. Right. And so we're very proud of them. Well, we're very proud very of grateful to have very both great of their leadership. Very grateful. Very good. You know, and we we're talk wrapping about, up in a minute. About, so hurt. we talk about student achievement, and we know we need yes. these services on Absolutely. focus on safety in order to get. Well, that. the number That's one right. issue for our families is safety. That's yep. right. And with that, safety is our motto, and student achievement is our goal. So stay with us, okay? Thank you, Thank you for joining us on Families Matter. Please visit our family websites, families.leusd.net and parentaccess.leusd.net. Your involvement makes all the difference. See you next month, and remember that families really, really matter. Thank you.